Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back, Kellen here again with Droid Life. So Pixel 4 XL back in hand because today, well, it's a big day. The Android 11 beta is now available. So if you own a Pixel 2, 3, 3a, or 4, you can now get Android 11. No more flashing developer previews. You can just sign up, click a couple buttons, get the update right over the air, and uh, start enjoying what's new. So because this is a new beta, there are some new things to talk about. So uh, let's dive into what's new in the Android 11 beta. Now, since this is, well, there's been four developer previews and now this is a beta, There's there's been tons of new stuff introduced in Android 11 that we've talked about. We've made previous videos, I'll link to those. We've, we've talked about a lot of these features in stories and things like that, I'll link to some of those below as well. What we wanna focus on here are the four big new things that Google is highlighting as, well, sort of the forward facing features that you might actually run into. So again, there's there's four things we're gonna focus on. There's a lot in Android 11, but uh, these are the big ones. Um, and, and we'll probably start first with, uh, well, let's let's start with the home screen. So home screen, if you're running a Pixel phone, you run Pixel Launcher, and uh, I, I don't know if you can tell, but there's some different stuff going on down here at the bottom. So the Pixel Launcher in Android 11 now does this sort of home screen recommendations thing. And and what, I, what I'm showing you there is, remember when you used to swipe up here and you'd get your recommendations in this top row here? Well, now they're allowing you to get them here as well. So if you long press and go into home settings, um, there's a suggestions option here. And if we go into suggestions, assuming it loads, there are now two things. So suggestions in the all app list, which is not new. And then we have suggestions on home screen, which is new. And so you can turn that on or off. And when you have it on, well, even if you have a row of icons down here in your dock, it bumps those up. So you can see this row I have here of five icons. Those were down here, it bumped those up and those are now just living on my home screen. So bump those up and now it's suggesting things time of day, uh, frequency, whatever. It, it's it's this, that sort of smart learning thing that Google's trying to do. So it's trying to show you apps that you may want to use uh, right now. Um, if we go in here, uh, I will show you that you can actually block apps from showing up. So I've actually blocked Chrome because I use Chrome beta and it was already starting to recommend me using Chrome. But if there's apps that show up in here that you don't want to be suggestions, this is where uh, you would disable those. Um, and that's sort of uh, the basics of taking care of it in there. Um, as things show up, they will change over time. If you see one that you want to show up all of the time, you can long press on and there's this little pin button here. You can see I can pin it and it sort of changes. There's no longer that that colored circle on the outside of the icon. You see that there, see how they all have this sort of colored uh, semi-transparent circle around it, except for that. It's because I pinned it. If you then want it to go away, you just grab it and drag it up to remove, if I can do that. And you'll notice down there, it replaced it, actually brought it back, and now that green circle is around the outside of it. See that? So anyway, these are recommendations. As you jump in between and in and out of apps, so let's say I open that, let's say I open that. Um, you can see it's it's adjusting sort of the order. The, the last one I opened is over here, and it kind of goes that way. Now it's starting to recommend, well, maybe you want to open Messenger. All right, so that's kind of the big new thing with the Pixel Launcher. Uh, I, I don't know if I love it. We'll, we'll, we'll run it for a little bit. It's giving me a little weirdness because these are my normal apps that have been down there for years and now they're bumped up a level and I think I want to move them to another screen. We'll see. We'll play with it. But anyway, that, that's what's new with uh, the Pixel Launcher. From there, let's talk about, uh, well, sort of a different change. You guys remember the app switcher, right? Well, first of all, we've got full navigation gestures are still here in Android 11. And if you swipe up and hold, this is your app switcher, right? You can switch between apps just by scrolling back and forth here. So they, they've changed a little bit of this. So it used to work where uh, you'd swipe up and hold and here are your apps. And then down at the bottom, you would be able to swipe up again um, and get into your app drawer. And so you could kind of switch to any sort of app you wanted to from any screen. Well, that's, unfortunately, that's now gone. If you swipe up now, you can see the app drawer is no longer down there as an option to now swipe up again. And instead we have a couple of shortcuts. We have screenshot, select, and share. They all do kind of what you think they might do. If I say screenshot, it will take a screenshot of the app that's showing in this preview, and it'll take a screenshot of the actual inside of the app. It's not taking a screenshot of with that weird border and things like that. You can see it's an actual screenshot from within the app. So what I'm saying there is it's not taking a screenshot of all this stuff on the outside. It's taking a screenshot of whatever's in there. Um, so that's what that does. Of course, you can always power 
hold hold powered and, and volume down for a couple of seconds and that will take a screenshot of whatever's on your screen but if you want to take a screenshot from within an app, this is one way to do it. It's, it's very weird, but it's there. Uh, select. So if you want to select, this would be text that you're seeing on here. You can see it actually tries to highlight text that's available to um, to copy or whatnot. Um, you can uh, you you can do that by hitting that button. Um, and then the other one is share. And if you click share, it takes a screenshot from within the app, just like that screenshot tool, and then tries to share it. Uh, they seem sort of like the same thing, but it is what it is. Um, you can also long press in stuff and copy um, text and things like that without hitting that select. That's that's kind of been there for a little while, I do believe. And you can actually turn that off if you want to. And, and that's sort of it. You can still swipe away things. So if I swipe something away, you can still kill it like that. If you scroll to the end, you can clear all. But so the app switch has changed a little bit. To be honest, I think for the worse. <laughs> I actually liked being able to access the app drawer at all times. And now I have three buttons down here that, well, to be honest, I'm probably never ever going to use. Uh, so what's next? Uh, oh, the power menu. So in the power menu, Google's actually doing quite a bit of cool stuff now. So long press and uh, you'll see it looks it looks quite different. So uh, up top is your emergency power off restart up there. If you have lockdown enabled, uh, you'll see a three dot menu there that you can enable lockdown. Um, here you can see it says Google Pay add a payment method. Google Pay is broken on this beta build for me. I, I don't know if it is for everyone, but it is for me, so I, I can't get that. But if you had Google Pay set up, you would see your credit cards available for payment. Um, you can see, you know, like airplane tickets and passes and things like that in there. And you just, you kind of scroll through them. It's like a carousel. So that's where those are. That's not necessarily new to Android 11. You can actually get that on Android 10 on Pixel phone. So that's not necessarily new, but uh, it is built in here. This, however, is fairly new. So um, this section is, well, it's controls. So within your power button now in your menu, you now have controls over your smart home. So you can see my various lights are in here and you can scroll to adjust brightness on these, which is kind of cool. Or you can just tap on them and that'll turn them off or on. Uh, there's my thermostat, I can tap that. It brings up a simple UI here to uh, adjust my thermostat without leaving any sort of screen. It's just kind of a pop-up. There's also shortcuts to access like, all my cameras or even turn my shield TV off and on that's in the living room. Uh, you can adjust this by uh, just tapping on this and you can add controls or edit them. Edit them, this just really lets you um, get rid of them or rearrange and you can drag and drag and drop doing that. Uh, if you go to add controls, it pulls into your Google Home. So if you have your Google Home app set up with all of your different rooms and all of that, that's where it's pulling this stuff from. Um, so you can just tap and check boxes if you want those to show up. And then those are now in your power menu. So very cool. I, I actually will use this a lot. Whereas the app switcher I just complained about, this is an area I think I will spend a lot of time. So if you want to access any of this stuff or turn it off or on, you just go into your settings and go down to system and gestures and uh, power menu down at the bottom here, power menu. And here are cards and passes and on device controls. So you can turn that stuff off. Uh, right there. Anyway, that's that's the new power menu. Next up now we have Bubbles. You guys probably have heard of Bubbles. Bubbles were actually first introduced in Android 10, didn't make the cut. Google pushed them to Android 11. Now Bubbles are sort of here. They're coming. So Bubbles, for those who are not familiar, are, you see this thing right here? See this thing that looks like a Facebook chat heads? Well, that's what Bubbles are. They're basically a copy of Facebook chat heads that was introduced I don't know, 2010 or 11. Google's now saying, well, conversations might be handy to have uh, easy access to at all times in a floating bubble. So they've created bubbles and all messaging apps will be able to access this at some time. Uh, for now, Facebook Messenger in beta is the only thing I'm finding that actually has this. Um, so bubbles, well, well, we'll kind of show you here. You can see I've got a bunch of conversations going on with Tim here. Um, and if I expand these, they just kind of are messages and there's no option for bubbles. If an, if an app has an option for a bubble, see that right there, see that on the bottom of this Facebook one, that is your option for bubble. Now, right now, because I have a bubble showing for Tim, it's only giving me the option to turn that bubble back off. Um, and if if you if you haven't started a bubble, that obviously that line will not be through that, but that's how you launch something into a bubble. And again, you can see on these two conversations, not there. So a bubble is, well, it, it looks about like you would expect it to. It pops up the conversation, um, sort of a chat head style. You can move these things around. You can 
minimize them. You can drag them and delete them, that sort of thing. So bubbles, they, they should come to other messaging apps, but again, it sure looks like they have to build that in. Um, there are settings for your bubbles. So if you jump in here and go into uh, apps and notifications um, and advanced, uh, sorry, in notifications, not in advance. There is a section right there for bubbles. And this is where you would turn it on at the system level. Then within each app that could potentially have bubbles, there are also controls where you can control for specific conversations to have bubbles, for apps to not have bubbles or to allow bubbles. There are so many controls here. It's actually getting a bit confusing, but that is where you find um, the main one. So again, apps and notifications and settings, then notifications and then bubbles. And then you could, you know, turn that off or on or whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, bubbles. All right. So the, the final thing here, let me get rid of Tim's bubble here. So the final, that did not go away. Go away, bubble. Wow, that was really hard. Uh, anyway, the, the final thing I want to talk about is uh, music controls. So uh, Google announced today in its Android 11 beta that there are music controls, which you can actually see, right? You can see it right there. I've got some weird thing going on. Um, so what was supposed to happen is music controls, when you start playing music, let me turn the volume down. We don't want that copyright strike, do we? Um, so if I hit play, 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 doesn't want to work. Play. Okay. Music controls. Uh, you can see a minor up here in my quick settings area. Normally they would be down here in sort of a silent notification. Um, they're up here. And this is where Android 11, they are going to live. Right now you have to turn them on in a developer setting. So if you go under developer options, there's a toggle to turn this on. It does force you to reboot in order for that to work. So just be aware of that. But eventually they will just be up there as sort of a system thing, maybe in beta two. I don't know. Either way, they're up here. And, and what's great about these is um, you have controls up there and you can access them with just your first half swipe down. Um, then it expands, it shows you more information. Uh, but you can also use these new controls to switch devices. So you can see here, if I just tap on this little button right here, it brings up a list of available options that I may wanna switch the audio to. So if I'm listening on my phone, I'm gonna switch to headphones, or if I wanna to switch to like a Google Home, that should eventually maybe one day show up there. I believe Google show that in their teaser. Uh, as of right now, I was able to switch between Bluetooth connected devices. I don't know if that's gonna be a cast thing that you'll be able to switch to. That would be really nice, but uh, I don't know if Google's going to do that. For now, it seems to be phone or connected Bluetooth, but you can just kind of tap and it'll toggle between those, which you know is, is, is kind of cool. So um, let's see. You can see I've got music playing. Here's sort of um, another thing that's, that, that I noticed. So let's just say I open YouTube music and I have no idea why you would want to do this. I'm now playing music sort of from two different apps. Uh, Spotify, you can see, is now paused. Um, but if I actually swipe over, I can get to the YouTube music, which is now running. So for some reason, you can run two audio apps, pause them, control them individually, which is kind of cool. I, I have no idea why you would want to do that, but you can. Um, so... Those are kind of the new music controls. Again, you have to turn them on with the developer option, but it sure looks like Google's going to build that in as being um, kind of the default in Android 11. Uh, it makes everything look a little weird and cramped up there, but you know maybe it'll it'll come in handy. So uh, I think that's mostly it. Uh, again, Android 11 is big. We've talked about a lot of the changes in previous developer previews. There's again, there's videos, write ups, all about that stuff. Just focusing here on the big beta changes. So uh, if, you, if we find more, we will certainly write those up at the site. But uh, yeah, uh, what do you guys think? Android 11 beta, did you flash it? Pixel 2, 3, 3a, 4, uh, you can get it right now. Uh, let us know if you have any comments or questions. We're Joy Life. Peace.